hundreds attend late Kato Otio's funeral. Authorities moving to assist Kadavar displaced. And New Zealand gives 35 million kina toward APAC preparations. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Friday's news. The New Zealand government has given 15 million New Zealand dollars to PNG toward APEC preparations, which is around 35 million kina. The aid will go towards security and logistic preparations. New Zealand High Commissioner Sue Mackwell also confirmed New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern's attendance to the APEC Leaders Summit in November. Minister for APEC Justin Tachenko today thanked the New Zealand government for the $15 million offer. Initiative and put their hands up to support their Pacific neighbour. And on behalf of our Prime Minister and our government, and as Minister for APEC, uh, I want to say thank you very much, High Commissioner, for your government's commitment and standing towards uh, the APEC 2018. It's to all our interests and all our benefit that this uh, APEC um, year and also the Leader Summit and the CEO Summit uh, is a success because it's not only a success for Papua New Guinea but also uh, the region as a whole. The aid will go to security preparations, logistic and also an important security aspect, cybercrime policing. Documents relating to uh, particular areas of training uh, around defence, uh, maritime support, uh, in intense uh, defence and intelligence training, geopolitical training, cyber security training, um, practical things, which, um, you know, as you say, Minister, are not just about APEC, mm. but can carry, carry forward as well in terms of um, capabilities. Um, here in, in Papua New Guinea. New Zealand High Commissioner Sue Mackwell says most of the funding will go to practical preparation, but if needed, it will also go to the other needs for APEC. In Papua New Guinea, not only in security and logistics, but in the protocol area, and there may well be other areas going forward over the year where um, we, we, we may be able to assist as well. A total of 12 New Zealand police have arrived in PNG to help in security preparations. And High Commissioner Mackwell also added that the New Zealand military will also be at hand to assist during the Leaders' Summit. For um, maritime support for Leaders' Week, so that's a, um, an Orion um, aircraft, which is one of the aircrafts that does the maritime surveillance. And then there's also a, um, a patrol vessel, which is, again, that sort of offshore uh, uh, marine patrol. So there will be um, two New Zealand uh, assets, as we call them, and all the defence. They call them assets, don't, don't you? Assets, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, are in and around Papua New Guinea at that time. Meanwhile, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern will attend the APEC Leaders' Summit in November. Minister will be here. New Zealand Prime Minister in Da Nang in uh, Vietnam for APEC, and uh, she was uh, really looking forward to the uh, and confirmed her visitation and uh, attendance uh, to APEC uh, for 2018 here in Fort Moresby. So, Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. The PNG Tourism Industry Association will conduct more training for small business owners to create more opportunities in tourism. Trainings will be centered on the minimum international standards from the Global Sustainable Tourism Council to broader tourism growth. The intensive training workshop this week aimed to provide a platform for participants to link sustainable development goals to their business policy. Tourism is said to be a great vehicle for government to achieve the sustainable development goals. The workshop was to incorporate the SDGs into the tourism arena. So what we've done for the last three days is look at the, um, the global context of sustainable development, what these goals are and how tourism can contribute to those delivering those goals. But to do that, you need tools, you need, you need some way to do it. And so 
what we've talked about is a international system called the Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria, which is the GSTC, the Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria. And they represent the minimum international standards for sustainable tourism, for hotels, for tour operators and for destinations. Knox, who had run a similar workshop in Mongolia, says PNG is similar to Mongolia and must see tourism as an opportunity and not a challenge. Um, and it's interesting actually, what's, a, what's similar between Mongolia and Papua New Guinea? Well, it's quite interesting that they're both resource dependent economies uh, and they both want to use tourism to help broaden their economies and look at new opportunities for for their citizens. Papua New Guinea's got, uh, is a, many people have said that PNG is an untapped tourism destination and it is because you've got, mag you've got things that people around the world are willing to pay money for to come and see and experience. And that's cultural and landscape and nature. Twelve members of the Tourism Industry Association participated in the three-day workshop, many of whom are small tourism businesses such as Wellness Lodge in Port Moresby, Sipic Adventure Tours in East Sipic Province and the Bala Guesthouse in Jiwaka Province. So we're privileged that this is the first time for us to go into details about sustainable development goals within the tourism industry, how it uh, is appro appropriate to us in the industry as a as a tour operator or as an accommodation provider or as a destination, um, as just a destination. Due to the importance of the SDGs, PNG Tourism Industry Association is looking at conducting another training workshop later this year. Stacy Yellow, National MTV News. Family members of a 28-year-old man in East New Britain are pursuing a legal battle against the Kokopo police for allegedly shooting an innocent man on New Year's Eve. The man from Kokopo district was gunned down in a police raid on New Year's Eve. Family spokesman Peter Candino says they're suing the state for killing the young man without any remorse. East New Britain Police Commander Senior Inspector Joseph Tabali has confirmed the shooting but says the deceased was wanted for a series of crimes in the area. Tabali says police were responding to a tip-off regarding a group of escapees residing in the area. A police patrol was dispatched but encountered a gunfight with the suspects, which resulted to the man being shot. However, relatives maintain the deceased was innocent and they'll challenge police in court. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Five lucky winners will be 1,000 Kina richer after their names were drawn in the Telecom Top Up and Win Cash Weekly promotion. The company, which has recently rolled out its 4G network in the Yalibu Pangia district in Southern Highlands, aims to provide the best service to its users. Today's draw was the 11th one since the promotion started and Telecom customers have eight more chances to qualify. This was the second draw for 2018, where five telecom user numbers were randomly chosen by the system. Each winner will be contacted directly through their numbers. In total, 100,000 will be given away, and with 11 draws done, 45,000 is still up for grabs until February next month. We encourage our corporate guys to sign on our CV, uh, close user groups as well. Mm. We're giving you, uh, not only giving a very competitive rate to our consumers, but corporate customers as well. So we encourage them to sign up and yeah, experience for yourself, see mm -hmm. for yourself. The lucky numbers chosen were telecom customers who bought 20 kina, 50 kina and 100 kina telecards to qualify. Telecom's chief risk officer, Russell Tato, says telecom customers are registered when they purchase their SIM cards and that has made it easier for them to track their customers. Registration of customers has already happened. And it's like it's working at the background to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, customers are not actually queuing up, but we are doing it in-house. And it's, uh, key data has already been updated. So we're pretty much smooth on that end. I think the new acquisitions, uh, the new customers coming in is, is where, you know, I think our team is also rolling out an app 
where they're doing it on app. So every time you get a new SIM, yeah, but uh, those who sign up early, we were proactive knowing that this will come in place. So we are sort of, uh, that's been managed. Tato stressed that Telecom has been proactive in terms of registering their customers and as a result, complying with NICTA regulations in terms of SIM card registration, which has not been an issue for them. Mr. Alone added that Telecom is looking at expanding its 4G coverage throughout the country as it hopes to connect PNG with the rest of the world by focusing on smartphone users. Uh, a lot of exciting uh, things coming up shortly. We've got one very exciting product as well, which is the 4GB, 4GB, 4000 MB. We give you a heat hours to download your all your apps, all your softwares, update your mm. virus and all that one. 4GB, 418 kina only. That's, that's how very affordable we are. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. Airline operator PNG Air says since the industrial strike by employees of the National Weather Service, they have continued with normal operations with the support of the PNG Civil Aviation Safety Authority and the PNG Air Service. General Manager Safety and Corporate Strategy Craig Chappell told MTV News that PNG Air Services is providing through their control tower network actual weather observations to help their air crew with flight planning. However, PNG Air says weather forecasting and observations are very important to help plan to the destination and understand weather conditions. Airports could have heavy rain, fog or other weather patterns that would require airline operators to carry holding fuel or diversion fuel to another airport. The NWS also issues satellite pictures, upper winds and area forecasts that provide information to assist with flight planning. PNGA is also carrying additional fuel which may occasionally lead to disruptions to cargo carriage. Transport Secretary Roy Mumu has announced that the nationwide strike by staff of the National Weather Service is now lifted and is required to return to work. Mr Mumu says after several meetings with the staff, they were able to come to an agreement and a committee has been set up to look into these issues. Normal operations for the PNG National Weather Service are to resume this afternoon. Transport Secretary Roy Mumu says after several meetings with officers, it was agreed issues surrounding the industrial strike was an outstanding salary grievances. This was based on arrangements made under the organizational structure. So this afternoon, uh, the officers are now being advised to resume duties and provide the required uh, meteorological and other services for the benefit of our industry and our people of Papua New Guinea and of course uh, our international uh, industry as well. It was resolved in the Wednesday meeting, my meeting with him, uh, with them that uh, the bottom line is the continuous uh, adoption of and all salary range, uh, position and the salary levels from the old civil aviation days that was uh, that continued uh, to be provided uh, until now. Mr. Mumu has made a commitment to set up a committee to look into the grievances. And, uh, we agreed and I made a commitment that the team will look at and dissect what happened and list down the offices that are affected so we can document it properly and present it to the Department of Personal Management. I was uh, encouraged that the new committee met this morning <coughs> to find out the issues. And as a result, we've reached that understanding and I finally requested the committee again this morning prior to my briefing to government that they should advise the officers that since the issue is now understood, they should return to work whilst we look at the activities that is required to resolve this issue. Officers were on strike for almost a week after the transport department failed to address the outstanding salary grievances. This has put the safety of the general public at risk, especially aviation and maritime sectors. If we have caused any inconveniences, uh, our sincere apologies to the aviation industry 
to the maritime industry and to the general public uh, for the national election that we have taken. Uh, uh, however, um, because the staff wanted uh, the, the issue, the salary issues, uh, to be uh, to be addressed by the Department of Transport Department, uh, that was a recent taken. But uh, uh, <clears throat> our sincere apologies uh, if any inconvenience is caused uh, in that regard. Marilyn Diaukadam, National MTV News. A relief centre for Kadavar Islanders has been set up at Mari Barracks in the nation's capital. Launching the centre this afternoon, Inter-Government Minister Kevin Isifu appealed to city residents to donate in cash or kind to people affected by the Kadavar volcano. He also announced other relief centres in Medang, Leh and Wewak. Since the volcano erupted over a week ago, Minister Isufu says there has been an overwhelming show of support to the Cadova Islanders. The launch of the relief center at Mari Barracks this afternoon is one of four centers throughout the country where the public can donate in cash or kind to the relief efforts. I would like to announce that uh, Mari Barracks uh, will be the coordinating center for all the relief supplies. The minister also announced the other centers in Lay, Wewek and Medeng are open and the public can call the following for more information. Uh, we have appointed, I have appointed uh, Rafael Lipmaramba uh, as the disaster controller. Uh, he is now in Wewek. Uh, we are making sure that uh, we have, we have this, uh, we have a uh, arrangement put together a good arrangement in place where we can coordinate our, the disaster properly. In the meantime, supplies are being delivered to the 2,000 plus affected Cadova Islanders. Minister Isufu says once the second PNGDF ship is on site, the evacuation process will begin. We already uh, did a survey of the land. It's about 30 to 40 hectares of land that's uh, the identified as the relocation uh, resettlement center for the uh, volcanic people, volcanic disaster. So in the next few days we will uh, make some payment to the landowners and we will, uh, uh, we will uh, acquire the land properly through the normal process. Director of the National Disaster Office, Martin Mose, also commended the relief efforts and says the Cadover Island response has been swift. He also commended the PNGDF for a quick response in deploying its assets to assist in the relief efforts. This has been the best managed response to disaster ever. And if it can be used as a model for the future, it will be good. I think we have been coming from strength to strength and um, we are not turning back. We're going to continue to better um, our disaster response through better practice that is conducted throughout the world. And that's the way to go and to do things, to do business. Meanwhile, reports from the Rabaul Volcano Observatory released today have shown the volcano is emitting significant sulfur dioxide, which indicates that fresh lava is now moving to the surface of the island. Northwestern winds are blowing the ash fall towards Wewek, and there is still a risk of a tsunami. Stanley Ove Jr., National MTV News. A delegation led by ECP Governor Alan Bird and Inter-Government Relations Minister Kevin Isifu flew over Kadovar Island on Wednesday to see firsthand the impact of the volcano. The delegates included Mining and Geohazard Minister Jonathan Tuke, Defence Minister Solan Mersim and PNGDF Chief of Staff Colonel Ray Numa. They landed on Ruprup Island and visited Kadavar Islanders. They assured the affected Kadavar and Ruprup people the national government is looking into the disaster with plans to resettle the islanders to mainland Wewak in the next 14 days. The government has also allocated 150,000 kina to assist with relief efforts. In the meantime, a PNGDF Navy ship is en route to Kadavar with additional supplies and will be on stand by to evacuate the affected islanders to mainland Wewak. The late Kato Otio's funeral was held today at the Sir John Guy's indoor complex. Hundreds of men, women and children in the nation's capital turned up in numbers to pay their final respects. 
The indoor complex was filled with special guests, family and mostly fans. Many came to pay their respects to the late Kato Otio. Members of parliament and superiors in the sporting fraternity made time available to witness the service of this young Kumul. The casket arrived at the indoor complex at 10 a.m. and was carried in by members of the PNG Kumuls and Hunters team, ushered by his family and current Hunters players. As the casket made its way into the complex, many stood in silence, grief-stricken as they watched their young hero being laid in front of the podium. His eulogy was read by his elder brother Ahulo. He described his kid brother as a determined, humble person who was always eager to learn. He told me about it and I lost count how many times I practically begged him to take up the Saints offer and forget World Cup. I even lobbied with moms to talk him out of it when he came for break and take up the Saints offer. All that was in vain. His response was with a smile and a giggle. Oh, that annoying giggle when you have been serious. He said, yes, bro, that's true. But I want to play in front of my people. He said, we don't know when the World Cup will come back to PNG. And this is my only ch chance. Minister Justin Chichenko paid his tributes, saying watching audio progress throughout his short career has been nothing but spectacular and has become an inspiration to many young boys in the country. So to everyone that aspires to be a rugby league champion, just remember the name Kato. Remember this young man. Never forget him from where he's come. And may to, his, to the family, especially to the mother, brothers and sisters and all the relatives. You produced a wonderful son, a shining example to all of us. PNG RFL Chairman Sandy Saka described Otio as a person of virtue, a person of professionalism and always humble. Saka says he will be missed by many and will always be remembered in the rugby league fraternity. Well, it may sound a cliché, Kato was PNG RFL's hope and inspiration. He was the ideal athlete for all sports administrators and volunteers. For the time and effort that all coaches, trainers, sports administrators, and partners and sponsors put into sport, it is very fulfilling and rewarding to see a young man rise up through the system, grab the opportunities that come, come their way with commitment and discipline, and aspire for greatness. Otio has left behind a legacy which will be remembered for generations. His humility and drive to always do better will be a reminder to many people. An emotional PNG Hunters captain, Ase Boas, spoke on behalf of the team, saying Otio was not only a teammate, but a brother. A brother who will be dearly missed. A brother who has left the team heartbroken. Brother Blumi, Lewa Blumi Pen. Natu online, Lewa Blue, Brother Blue, who said you shall play one then. And Buru, time you see me plan ago. But still, a part of you will always live inside us. We will still carry your legacy wherever we go. Wherever we play, we will still remember you and carry you with us. A poem was written by a member of the Hunters team in memory of the late Kato Otio. I know you didn't mean to leave me. Sometimes we have no choice. I've missed being your brother. Hearing my name called by a voice before you were given to the sky. If God could grant me one last wish, I'll ask for goodbye. You will always make me laugh because your stories lives on. I feel you and gives me strength and courage. The tears I have cried for you could flood the earth. And I know you have wiped each one away. For you, brother, I promise you this. 
Karen Kumul's captain, David Mead, sent his tribute from France, which was read out by Ase Boas. Mead wrote he first met Otio during the 2015 Pacific Test and had labeled the 23-year-old as a true friend who will be remembered as a passionate rugby player who always had a smile on his face. It saddens me to hear about a great young man who has so much potential to have his life come to an end. You may not be here with us physically, but your spirit and your memories will forever be live on our hearts. I will miss you, Katsi. May, your, may you rest in peace with love, David Mead. After the sermon was the viewing. Long lines were made as more than 3,000 people flocked the Indo complex to take one last look at the rugby league star and pay their respects. <laughs> His teammates were the last as they grieved over their teammate, friend and brother. After closing the casket, the PNG Arfeld officially handed over Otio to his family. A Kumus jersey was presented by John Wilshire and Michael Marum to Otio's mother. The casket was then carried out of the indoor complex and into the funeral home vehicle. Thousands stood on the sides of the road as the casket was driven out and back to the funeral home. Otio will be taken to Tatana village on Monday afternoon before being buried at the Tatana cemetery on Tuesday. Elijah Vett, National MTV News. Rising PNG Rugby League star, the late Kato Otio was an influential character and a role model for young aspiring athletes from all walks of life. We will bring you more in Chukai Sports. Now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3095 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0.302 US dollars, 0.3785 Australian dollars, 0.2467 Euro and 33.22 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher while coffee, cocoa and copra closed the day lower. Crude oil is trading higher, copper closed higher, while palm oil closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 205.6 points higher, the ASX closed at 2.48 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed at 0.56 points higher. You're at National MTV News. We have more local stories after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back. There are unconfirmed reports of two other volcanoes popping out near Kadavar Island. A source at the ECP governor's office says satellite images provided have picked up movements near the Shouten group of islands. The officer says scientists and other specialists will be tasked to travel to the island and confirm these reports. Meanwhile, ECP Governor Alan Bird is expected to travel to Ruprup Island to witness the last supply of relief to the affected islanders. A ton of rice was donated to the affected Kadovar Islanders by Trukai Industries in Wewak this afternoon. ECP Governor Alan Bird received the donation on behalf of the provincial government. Trukai's Wewak manager Casper Jeffrey says the donation is to help the ongoing relief program. He says the ton is made up of about 50 bales of rice. Governor Bird thanked Trukai, stating the affected islanders need urgent relief supply as food scarcity is a concern. The ton of rice is expected to be shipped to the Kadavar islanders who are currently settled at Ruprup Island. Overcrowding is a health risk in Lays Buimo Jail. There are 52 prisoners and over five officers diagnosed with tuberculosis, which has raised many concerns. Lays Buimo Prison is currently accommodating nearly 1,000 prisoners, which include over 700 remandees still waiting for court hearings. 
The overcrowding at Lays Buyumo Prison has been a concern for over 10 years and little has been done. The concern has continued and has caused many major problems such as escapes, inadequate food supplies and worst of all, a TB outbreak. Buimo's prison commander Felix Namane has confirmed that there are 52 confirmed prisoners with TB cases currently in prison. They are refusing to get into the compound of Apollo Carabusta for an hour. That is the one of the holding help for all. That's risky. The jail commander has also confirmed that overcrowding has caused the recent escapes and also of the other escapes in the past years. There are currently more than 600 remandis in the prison. Namane said the delay of court hearings has contributed to the overcrowding. We are serious about addressing law and order. We must address correctional services for the police and the court. Police is here for the law and the law. We will continue to live with it. Buimo prison cell block has a holding capacity of 40 men. Currently, there are over 100 detainees occupying the cell. The situation in the prison is worse than one can imagine. The detainees take turns to sleep when night falls. As we were leaving, 10 more prisoners were brought in by Lay's police. The number continues to grow every day. We know, although it's a national function, but if this prison belongs to the people of Lay, more of a problem. So, provisional government has to come in assist correctional service, whether it means they have to share the budget on a 50-50 basis, let it or more of the provincial government must take ownership of the prison of more wages. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lake. Two men in their early 20s have sustained minor injuries in an accident on the Hohola Freeway this afternoon. The sedan missed two vehicles before crashing into barricades in front of the Star Mountain Plaza at 3 this afternoon. Eyewitnesses say the men were driving at high speed. Construction workers of the hotel were able to salvage the wreckage with a forklift. Chukai Sports is up next. Stay tuned for that. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Martin Tassem, coordinator of the Hohola off-season rugby competition, has passed his condolences to the family of the late Kato Otio. Speaking on behalf of the suburban rugby communities, he said it's little leagues like this that we find uh, raw way, talent like the late Otio. As a representative of all offices and the coordinator, I mean, like a big plus or in Lopas, I will blow one blah, play a blum blah, 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 bl
Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. With an influential character and being a role model for young aspiring athletes from all walks of life was his personality. And the late Kato Otio was a testament of one well lived. For the kids, losing a sporting hero and the role model is indescribable. The emotion captured on this little boy's face speaks volumes of a thousand, if not more, of aspiring youngsters around the country, touched by the life of late Kato Otio. Athletes, both past and present, said their goodbyes to a fellow comrade with teary eyes. Everyone present acknowledging the commitment he gave to his sport and his country. Otio's passing, like that of any loved one, has left behind a vacuum in his immediate family's life and those close to him. For a young athlete who achieves so much for his family, clan and country in a short period of time, many believe his life will be celebrated in many years to come by those whose lives he touched and by those he has inspired. And after all the mourning and sadness witnessed here today, Late Kato Otio will be remembered for his personality, his charisma and humble character, a soul destined for greatness, gone too soon. History will forever remember him as Hunter No. 29 and Kumul No. 269. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And to cricket and Team East Asia Pacific fell short of making the Australian Country Cricket Championship Grand Final after losing to South Australia Country by 26 runs and New South Wales by 35 runs. New South Wales Country went on to defeat Queensland Country by 39 runs in the finals. The Australian Country Cricket Championship is an annual tournament which showcases the best cricket talent with teams from all around Australia and the East Asia Pacific region. And being part of the EAP region, PNG men's and women's national teams, the Hebo PNG Barramundis and the CPL PNG Lewis are also part of this tournament. The EAP men's team consists of six PNG players and eight Vanuatu players, while the women's team has eight PNG players, four Vanuatu players and a Samoan. The men's team performed well winning three of the five matches but for now the women's results are yet to be confirmed. And while the Barramundi's 28th in calendar is yet to be confirmed, the Lewis on the other hand are gearing up for the T20 World Cup qualifiers due in June in the Netherlands. And this tournament serves as a much needed prep for the national women's team. Dinero Strico National MTV Sports. Still on cricket, the PNG Under-19 Garmuts will play the opener match of the 2018 ICC Cricket World Cup campaign tomorrow against Zimbabwe. 20 years ago, a PNG Under-19 side debuted in the World Cup against Zimbabwe, where the African nation won by 147 runs. Ten years later, Papua New Guinea bridged that gap by finishing two places ahead of Zimbabwe. Likewise, the 2010 and 2012 editions of the tournament saw similar results as PNG continued to stay ahead of Zimbabwe. Tomorrow's match is expected to see Zimbabwe once more make an effort to finish ahead of PNG. And that's a wrap for Trukai Sports. Up next, your weather details leading into the weekend. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region: afternoon thunderstorms in Port Moresby, cloudy tomorrow. Cloudy with thunderstorms in Daru and Kerma tonight. 
thunderstorm in spots with a brief shower in Alatau and a couple of evening thunderstorms in Popendeta. In the Momase region, cloudy with stray thunderstorms in Leh and Medang, cloudy with thunderstorms with a bit of humid air in Wau, thunderstorm in spots in Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy and warm tonight in Loringau, Kokopo and Rabaul, brief shower or two in Kaviang, partly cloudy in Kimbe and a couple of evening showers can be expected in Buka. And in the Highlands region, periods of rain expected in Mount Hagen, cloudy with thunderstorms in Goroka, Wabeg and Mendi and Kundiawa can expect an overcast of thunderstorm in spots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Before we go, recapping our main stories again. Fans turn up in numbers to pay their respects to the late Kato Otio. Authorities in WIWAC moving to help displaced Kadovar Islanders. And New Zealand supports PNG with APAC preparations. And as we close the news tonight, we show you some more of the funeral service of the late Kato Otio today.